This video talks about the general structure of scientific notation, why we use it, and how to write in scientific notation. At the top of the screen, you'll see the general form of scientific notation. You have the m, sometimes called the coefficient, which is going to be a number between 1 and 10. That's times 10, that's raised to the power of n. n is going to represent your power of 10, whatever that happens to be. The scientific notation is based similar to the metric system. If your exponent of n is a negative number, that means the original number was smaller than 1. For example, if the number is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 4, negative 4 indicates that it's going to be a number smaller than 1. The standard notation would be 0 .00032. If your n exponent is a number that's positive, that means the original number is greater than 1. For example, 5.7 times 10 to the 5th. Since 5 is a positive number, that means the number in standard notation is in fact greater than 1. Think of it this way. Negative exponents are very small numbers. Positive exponents are very large numbers. In science, we typically use the scientific notation when we're dealing with numbers that are very large, which are 10 to the third or larger, and numbers that are very small, which are 10 to the negative third or smaller than that. So let's get some practice on doing these simple conversions. The first case, we're going to look at an, an instance where we're going to take scientific notation and convert to standard notation. And then in example 2 and 3, we're going to go the other way. So suppose I give you the number 5.92 times 10 to the 4th, and I ask you to write that number in standard notation. Whenever we're converting something from scientific notation to standard notation, or the other way around, we're in the process of moving decimals. So we're going to be moving the decimal that's between the 5 and the 9. The first question is to ask is how many decimal places will we move? The number of decimal places we move is going to correspond to the exponent. So in other words, we're going to move the decimal place four spaces since that's the exponent that's here. But which direction? Do we move to the left or do we move to the right? Well remember, a positive exponent means the number in standard notation is greater than one. In order to produce a number that's greater than one, we have to move the decimal four places to the right. So we're going to move our decimal one, two, three, four places to the right. Any empty space that we see, we're going to fill with zeros. And so, the number in standard notation would be 59,200. For the second and third one, we're going to be going the other way. We're going to actually be asked to convert the standard notation into scientific notation. The first thing we need to do is we need to move the decimal place in such a way where we create a number between 1 and 10. So if we look a little closer at the second number that we were looking at, in order to get our decimal uh, in such a place where we create a number between 1 and 10, we need to move the decimal place 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. By doing that, we end up getting a number that's between 1 and 10. Namely, we get the number 7.90. Now, we need to add times 10 and put the exponent. Remember, the exponent is how many places you move the decimal. Recall that we moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. So the exponent is going to be the number 8. And the exponent is going to be a negative 8 since the original number was smaller than 1. So 7.90 times 10 to the negative 8th would be our scientific notation. Let's take a look at the last one. Notice the last one is written kind of funky. You'll notice that there's some spaces here. This is common in science. A lot of times we put these spaces here because in science you'll notice the general trend is we want to separate numbers by threes rather than writing commas. So this isn't a typo. Uh, pretend that there's a comma in these spaces right here. All right. The thing that to notice though is that we are dealing with a very large number and so we're going to want to write this in scientific notation. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to move my decimal place in such a way where I get a number between 1 and 10. Now you may be saying there is no decimal place in this one. For large numbers, assume the decimal place is at the very end. It's just not being shown. So now we move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. That creates the number 8.93. Notice I don't keep all those zeros because according to significant figures, they aren't significant. So 8.93 is my number times 10 and then I move the decimal eight places. I'm gonna keep it a positive eight since the original number that I had was definitely larger than one.